Julian Morrow to the returns counter. Do you know what your rights are? You have the right to remain silent. One of the advantages of being arrested, anything you say can and will be used against you, is that the police have to read you your rights. You understand? Yes. But as a consumer, no one reads you your rights, and many shoppers are left with the wrong impression. Signs like this, for example. Or this, or this, or this. They're bullshit and they're illegal. Warning, consumer law does not give you the right to deface signs, even if they're bullshit. The point is, it doesn't matter what the dodgy sign says. It doesn't matter what the dodgy fine print you're never going to read says. And it doesn't matter what the dodgy sales assistant says. Wait! It's true. If you buy goods in Australia, you've got rights under the Australian consumer law. And those rights are exactly the same, whether you buy from a big chain store, a small retailer, a second-hand store, or even an op shop. But they don't apply to private sales. So you're OK, Harvey. It's Norman. You can read yourself your rights at consumerlaw.gov.au. Now, I'm the kind of guy who loves doing that. But if you're not, here are the basics about returning goods in Australia. You have the right to return a product if it's not as described. And that's as described on the packet or by the person who sold it to you. You have the right to return something if it's not fit for its purpose. And that includes the usual purpose, but also if you conveyed a different purpose to the f**kwit who sold the product to you and it's not fit for that purpose, you can return it then too. You also have the right to return a product if it's not of acceptable quality. Now, what's acceptable quality? This is where it gets interesting. What's acceptable quality isn't about you. It's about you, the consumer. What do you think is acceptable? Actually, it's not about you. It's about what the reasonable consumer, fully acquainted with the goods, would regard as acceptable. Do you mind? Anyway, a product is only acceptable if it looks OK, if it's safe and if it's durable. What durable means depends on the sort of product it is. There are lots of products, fridges, freezers, washing machines that we keep for a long time. And for them, reasonable durability should be measured in years, even decades, not weeks or months. For example, you'd expect a candlestick like this to last for many years. So if it fell apart after, say, two years, you can still return it. You've really let yourself go. You can't return this without the original packaging. That's wrong. The consumer law says you don't need the original packaging to return something. You don't have the receipt. <laughs> well, I don't need the receipt. I'm right, you know. There's no law that says you need a receipt. You just need to be able to prove your purchase. And there's plenty of ways of doing that, whether it's credit card records, product serial numbers, or maybe even social media. <laughs> and just say that somebody's being difficult. Remember, it's the consumer's choice where you take things back. You can return them to the manufacturer if you want, but you can also return it to whoever you bought it from. The store can't fob you off to the manufacturer. And they can't charge you for it either. In fact, even saying there's a fee is illegal. You could go to jail, Joe. Actually, it's just a fine. Shh. Even better, if you get something as a gift, you've got exactly the same consumer rights as if you purchased it yourself. So long as you can show where it was bought, you can return your gift without a receipt, even without the original packaging. Now, there are some limits in the consumer law to spoil your fun. You don't have the right to return goods if an unreasonable amount of time has passed. And you 
don't have the right to return goods if you damage them yourself. And most disappointingly of all, you don't have a clear right to exchange goods or get a refund if you've just changed your mind, unless the shop's policy allows it. And some retailers will even do it out of the goodness of their heart. So it's always worth asking. But back to the cool stuff in the consumer law. If you're returning something and you think it's so unacceptable that you wouldn't have bought it in the first place, then it's your choice, not the store's, whether you get a refund or a replacement. Provided you're a reasonable person. Would you shut up? That's not very reasonable. As well as your money back, you've also got a right to compensation for any reasonably foreseeable loss. And that compensation can include the cost of transport for returning the goods. Yeah, I know, reasonable cost. And if the cost of returning it's significant, which it could be for something like a fridge, then the supplier's got to collect it at their expense. But remember, if the problem isn't a major one, it's the seller's choice whether to refund or exchange. So you're at their mercy. And one last cool thing. Under the consumer law, any statement made by a product manufacturer or supplier when they're trying to sell it to you constitutes an explicit guarantee. So when you're shopping, you've got rights, and anything they say can and will be held against them. Getting faulty products and bad service can be annoying. Sometimes it's tempting to lash out. Up you get. The consumer law is there to protect you and you have the right not to remain silent. Shitty service is annoying, but it's not giving you the right to commit murder. Allegedly!